Making charcoal was a craft that was disappearing from the Edwardian countryside. This is the site of the charcoal burn then? Yes, it's uh, flat, easy to get the wood to it, and once we've cleared a space, taken away all this leaf mould, we can start building the clamp. Collins chosen a site well away from any trees. Once the ground is cleared, they can build a charcoal fire, or clamp, starting with the chimney. Right, we're running out of rope, Peter. I do have my, get my belt, my you goat rope. You can't burn that. Your trousers will fall down. It's in a good cause, Ruth. <laughs> the ultimate sacrifice. Thank you very much, Peter. You will not go unrewarded. <laughs> it's very good string, is this? Next, the raw material for making charcoal, seasoned oak, is stacked tightly round the chimney. This process of making charcoal, what are we actually doing to the wood? Well, the wood is made up of cellulose and, and minerals that um, you see the trees around you, they suck from the earth. And those items are quite flammable, they're volatile. Right. So in the process of making charcoal, what we do to start with is burn those off. And then once we've burnt them off, we try and stop the burning process. That's when we starve the, the clamp of oxygen, leaving ourselves with pure carbon. By driving off the cellulose and minerals, the logs will contain just carbon. This is charcoal and will burn at a much higher temperature than wood. This is a key moment now because we're going to cover it all up and set fire to it. And then, apart from controlling the air, there's not much we can do. Enclosing the wood in a soil and straw layer makes the flow of air into the fire easily controllable. All we've got is two ton of soil, so we've got to be really careful with it. All we need is a thin layer to cover the whole of the clamp. There you go, second ingredient for your mud pie. Oh, there you lovely. Go. Not Indian. too much, just a slight dampening. Okay. Now it's time to light it. That's perfect, a few embers. What we're trying to do is get the fire going and then slow it down so that it's a cold fire. And so you get a lot more chemicals in the wood actually occupying the smoke. And that's why it's important not to breathe it in. So I suppose you need fuel, heat and oxygen to make a fire. Yeah. And we're reducing the oxygen, yeah. which reduces the heat, which preserves some of the fuel, which will be charcoal in the end, I suppose. Yeah. As the fire in here heats up, it's obviously everything's starting to shrink as it dries out and the moisture's driven off. So this outside layer of mud is cracking. And where the cracks appear, smoke starts coming out. And that's a bad thing because that means air can get in. So we've just got to keep covering all these little smoke holes so that we can control our fire. We're now getting sort of heat into the clamp and what we're burning off there are the gases. Colin's watching the clamp closely looking for signs that the cellulose and minerals have burnt off. Then he blocks off the chimney to restrict the air, slowing the burn. We're bridging over the clamp now with these timbers so that we can put um, a covering on which will actually choke the fire. The fire must smoulder for five days and nights until the wood has completely carbonised into charcoal. The team are here for the long haul, so it's time to set up a sturdy shelter. I think that's in now, Peter. Cool. Can you hang off a bit? Let's see if we can hang off it. Oh. And now we've got our ridge pole up, just bringing a canvas over, and this is going to be our shelter for the next five days as we watch and tend the charcoal clamp. This is how charcoal burners would have lived, moving from site to site through the woods. And, you know, it was permanent occupation, and there are many accounts of people raising, you know, sort of about eight kids in the, a shelter no bigger than this. You don't often get a chance to build a camp at my age, so I always love getting out in the sticks properly, living under canvas. Back at the camp, Colin's preparing to make iron for the weather vane. To do this, he's building a primitive furnace. In the Edwardian period, there was a great shortage of iron, 
and in this area a number of skills survived into the modern age. You had iron ore and if you wanted iron you could actually make it in what is essentially a very primitive furnace. What an ancient technology, but I mean, was this still going on in the boarding period? Well, in these rural areas, skills survived for generations beyond which they were almost obsolete or extinct in the cities, because what you didn't have quite often was money. And if you had the raw materials, which they had down here, then you could always get yourself out of a fix. Iron is found naturally in a rock called iron ore. To extract the metal from the ore, it must be heated in the furnace to 1,200 degrees Celsius. To achieve this, they must burn the charcoal. This is the acid test. Five days, four nights without sleep. And, you know, we need to know whether we got good charcoal. Digging through the layer of straw and soil, the charcoal is revealed. Right, couple of pieces, right? This is what we've been looking for all that time. Wow. Oak <laughs> that is burnt right through and is pure carbon. Black wow. gold. Black gold? Yep. Yeah. 